Welcome, 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 guys. Um, it's so exciting to be here. Thank you to Shalid Africa um, for giving me this opportunity. I'm really excited. Um, today, we're going to be talking about the rise of women in politics, um, a, a subject that I think everyone should be talking about. Um, so again, thank you very much to She Leads Africa for this opportunity. If you haven't joined She Leads Africa, I don't know what you're waiting for. They're an amazing community. So go to sheleadsafrica.org slash join um, to join. So welcome, 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 ladies. Um, and a few brave men who I hope have joined us as well. Um, it's, it's such a delight to be here. My name is Abosede George Ogan. I am at the and I am the chief facilitator at Women in Politics NG. So today we're going to be talking about the rise of women in politics. But before we go there, I'll tell you a little bit about myself. Um, so when I was 16, and don't ask me how, but I started to say I wanted to change the world and make a difference. Um, and this led me to try to study international relations because I thought ambassadors were changing the world and they were representing their countries. Um, but then they didn't have that course in the school that I wanted to go to. So yes, I ended up studying political science and public administration for my first degree. Um, but after graduating, I came across an organization called ActionAid, and their vision was a world without poverty. And I thought, I have to work for that organization. They're trying to eradicate poverty in the world. And that's how I basically started my career. So I like to call myself a tri sector leader. I've worked in nonprofit, I've worked in private sector, and my current job is that I work at. Um, at, at a public sector organization in Lagos, Nigeria. Great, so um, thank you, thank you, thank you for welcoming everyone, SLA. I hope everybody is, um, is connecting. I just wanted to say that I will be answering questions later on. Um, I'm hoping that, you know, I cover a lot of the questions that came in. But I have a few other questions that I think weren't covered within the scope of this that I would like to respond to. But feel free also to make your, uh, to add more questions or to ask questions in the, in the comment section. Great, so let's move right into it. Why should women build a career in politics? That is the most important question. So I'll be giving you a few reasons why women should build a career in politics. Now, when we talk about building a career in politics, to be honest, it's the same thing as building a career in any other profession. So it means that you have to take specific steps um, and you have to make certain decisions to lead you into a career, in this case, in politics. OK, but let's start by talking about why women should build a career in politics. The first reason is the global average of politics as at today is 23.4%. This is the global average. Now, when you think about the fact that the global declaration, so the Beijing Declaration and Platform for Action recommends 30% um, representation of women in politics across the world, and our global average is currently 23.4%, then you begin to understand why more women should get involved in politics. In my country, Nigeria, the average is 6.7%, a very long way from 30%. And the assignment that I want to give you today is that you should go and find out what your country average is all right, in terms of women's representation and participation in politics, because maybe that would be your main reason for getting involved. OK, so that's the number one reason. But there are several other reasons. The second reason is that if we are to achieve goal five of the, of the sustainable development goals, which is gender equality, then women's participation and representation in politics is very important to us achieving this goal as a country, um, as a continent and, of course, globally. So this is another reason why women should get involved in politics. Um, the third reason is that there is actually evidence 
all right, to show that when there are more women in politics, it actually leads to better human development. So in that, in that case, any country that has more women in politics automatically has better human development. And I'll tell you why this is the case. Because when women participate actively in politics, they think about women, they think about children, they think about minorities, they think about healthcare, they think about education. So it's not to say the men do not think about these things, but you would find that because of the way that we are, men tend to think about more infrastructure. They tend to think about more the hard stuff, if you care. Um, but women have a way of thinking about the, the soft stuff, but also the hard stuff. And so there is evidence to show that the more women we have particip participating in, in politics actually leads to better human development, leads to better life, because at the end of the day, if you think about it, politics actually affects every area of our lives. So socially, education, healthcare, the environment, everything. So politics affects every area of our lives. So these are some of the reasons that women should be participating in politics, okay? Hello, 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 everyone. Um, I can see people shouting out. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Good to have you here. So we'll quickly move into, um, so we've talked about a little bit about politics, introduction to a career in politics, and I've just outlined some of the reasons why women should be participating in politics. And remember the assignment that I gave to you, which is you should actually go and find out what is your country average in terms of women's participation in politics, bearing in mind that the benchmark the world is aspiring to is the Beijing Com um, Declaration, which prescribes 30% of women's participation in politics. Great. Um, so now we will quickly move on to, um, so what are the skills, what are the qualifications that you need to participate in politics? But before we go there, I wanted to talk about, um, so there's a conversation about gender quotas, and that's not the subject for today. But the point is that some people argue that they don't like gender, gender quotas because it's just about the quantity of women as opposed to the quality. And so I wanted to start today by saying that it is very, very important for us to share what are some of the challenges that prevent women from actually participating in politics. Um, and the first one is a lack of confidence. I mean, there have been a lot of studies and evidence to show that women um, lack confidence generally in comparison to men. Um, but the most important thing is women lack confidence, okay? And so they don't have the confidence to take the bold step to get into politics. But oftentimes, confidence is linked to a lack of certain things. And one of the major things is intellectual capacity, financial capacity, sometimes social capacity, which is your network. So, um, sorry, I was just reading a comment there. So, one of the reasons why women are not getting involved in politics is lack of confidence. But remember, I just told you that the lack of confidence is premised on a lack of capacity intellectually, lack of financial capacity, and lack of social capacity. So therefore, if you're a woman who wants to get involved in politics, you should know that these are some of the requirements, okay, to get involved. <clears throat> Excuse me, once you build intellectual capacity, you're able to build financial capacity, and you're able to build also social capacity, then it would be more easier and you'd have more confidence to participate in politics. So that's one of the things that prevents women from participating in politics. The second point um, would be around cultural and religious beliefs. So we know that we're in Africa, all right? 
there's just the way that we've grown up. There's just the way that um, the the cultures and beliefs um, that have been info that has influenced us um, based on our religion. This is despite the education, uh, the educational qualification that we have. So this is one of the challenges that prevents women from participating in politics. Perception is a huge problem. So people don't know how people will perceive them. Um, there is this underlying notion that politics is for men. And so a woman will not feel comfortable even trying to get involved uh, because you know there's a perception that it is for men, but that is wrong. And like I said, the most important thing is about building capacity. And we'll talk about that a little bit later. So um, I think that really summarizes why women do not get involved in politics. So confidence is a huge challenge, as well as our religious and cultural beliefs here in Africa. But moving on quickly, um, so what are some of the qualifications if you wanted to build a career in politics? I hate to disappoint anyone listening, but the truth is there are no specific qualifications to get involved or participate in politics. I know I just burst the bubble, but that's the truth. However, however, um, at Women in Politics NG, which I represent, we recently did a, a, a little bit of a survey of all the women in elective office in Nigeria. And what we realized was the top courses they studied in university was law. That brings no surprise, I'm sure. Accounting, public administration, and education. All right? So I think it is safe to say that oftentimes the people who get into politics mostly study the social sciences. But remember what I said, I think you can get involved in politics regardless of what you study or what you are studying. And I'll tell you why. Politics is fundamentally about how you influence the decisions that impact on the people, which is the public, all right? And there are so many areas of human affairs that the government is responsible for. So even if you were an engineer, you know, you could play a significant role in addressing environmental problems, for example, um, or even if you were a doctor, healthcare, all right? And if you were an accountant, which is not surprising why accountants are one of the major people who participate in politics because of public accountability, there's a lot of financial um, things that will go on in terms of managing the resource of a nation or a government at the state, local or federal level. So, these were the top courses we observed, all right, um, that the women who were in elective office here in Nigeria had in terms of their qualification. But it does not mean that you cannot uh, participate in politics if you were studying, I don't know, aerophysics or, or whatever it was, or if you were an IT expert. An easy way to think about it is there are portfolios um, within a lot of governments. You know, so there's the Minister for Education, there's the Minister for Foreign Affairs, there's the Minister for, you know, so many other things, all right? So if you think about the portfolios, you would recognize that, you know, there are different expertise that are required, all right, to handle those portfolios. So that's, that's one of the easy ways to think about it. Um, so I've talked about qualifications. Um, so like I said, to be honest, it is agnostic if you ask me. The most important thing is how do you want to participate, okay? So this is the point where I also talk about competency, all right? And for those of us who understand what your competence is, it's what you have built experience um, in over time, okay? And so one of the things that we observed about the women as well is that oftentimes, because there is appointive and elective office, so what that means is some women get into politics by appointment and others by running for elective office. The, what you would find is that most women who eventually ran for elective office had held appointive office in the past or elective office, all right? So they just sort of progressed in their career. That's one. The second thing that we found 
is that they were actually women who had successfully built careers in other sectors or in other areas, okay, of expertise. And they were basically called upon, referred or recommended to hold certain uh, appointed positions. And there's no surprise about that because it's about competency. Remember we said that one of the things that encourages women to build a conscious career is actually confidence and intellectual capacity plays a huge role in that. Okay, um, I'll just look at some of the comments here. I think we're good. I think everybody's um, participating. So what I, what I, so I've talked about competence. I've talked about qualifications. Now I want to talk about some of the basic skills that you need to have. All right. So when we talk about skills, of course, leadership skills, very, very important. 